All right, and uh, this is the quick review in graphing polynomial functions. All right, so a couple things right off the bat. First off, we want to take a look at the function itself and determine what type of function it is. All right, so uh, I want to look at the uh, lead coefficient. And because the lead coefficient is negative, I know that this function is going to end up going down toward negative infinity. I want to look at how it begins by taking a look at the exponent. Uh, an odd exponent says that it starts and finishes opposite. So if it's going to finish down, it's got to start up. So I know this function is going to come from positive infinity and head toward negative infinity. Okay, now I know I need to find the zeros. So in order to, to graph this properly, i got to find the, the zeros. How do you find the zeros? Set the function equal to zero and factor. Now, I can't factor this outright. So I've got to first off find a factor. And so I'm going to use the remainder theorem. And the key is really this negative 4. Now, some of the possible factors, I'll just show them to you. You can do x minus 1, x plus 4, x plus 1, x minus 4. There are other factors because of the lead coefficient being a 3 or a negative 3. But for right now, I'm just going to worry about these and see if any of these work. Okay, so the remainder theorem. Let me try the x plus 1 factor. Okay, and to try an x plus 1 factor, it really means what I'm going to do is I'm going to try f of negative 1. So everywhere where the variable is, we're putting in a negative 1, right? So I'm putting parentheses where my variables are, and everywhere where there's a variable, I'm putting in negative 1. Okay, negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times a negative 3 is 3. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 5 is 5. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Oh, and look at that. 8 minus 8 is 0, exactly what I wanted. And because I got a 0, I know that x plus 1 is indeed a factor. Okay. Next step, long division. I've already found one zero, but I want more. Long division, negative 3x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x minus 4. Okay, and i got to do this quickly here. Front divided by front, so that's a negative 3x squared. x times negative 3x squared is a negative 3x cubed. 1 times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. Don't forget we're subtracting. Okay, this is an 8x squared. Front divided by the front. So this is a positive 8x. x times 8x. 8x squared. Oh, forget to bring down my 4x. All right, I'm sorry about that. So x times 8x, 8x squared. Yeah, I put it in the wrong place, didn't I? All right, let's fix this up here. That's what happens with quick review. You want to go quickly. And uh, so this should have been up here. Okay, so x times 8x, 8x squared, and 1 times 8x, positive 8x. And again, don't forget you're subtracting. Distribute the negative. This is a negative 4x. Bring down the negative 4. All right, and again, front divide it by front. So this is negative 4. x times negative 4, negative 4x. 1 times negative 4, negative 4. And when I subtract, I get 0, exactly what I was expecting. Okay, good. So now I have indeed found two factors. So let me clear this up a little bit so I can work with it. Okay, so what I know is I know I have x plus 1 times the quantity negative 3x squared plus 8x minus 4. Let's see if I can further factor this. So I got negative 3x and x. I got to end up with a positive 8 in the middle, and I got a 4. How about 2 and 2? This is negative 2. That's going to give me a, a positive 6x. And a positive 2 is going to give me a positive 2x and a negative 8x in the middle. Yeah, there it is. Okay, there's the factoring. Okay, so here are the three factors, and therefore now my zeros x equal negative 1 from this one x equals negative divided by negative is positive two-thirds and from this one x equals 2 okay let's graph our zeros negative 1 
two thirds, somewhere about in there, and two. Now I can also do my y intercept, which means set all the x values equal to zero, and that would be negative four, so right about in there. Okay, I've got all those points. All I need is an xy chart now to finish off. Okay, I'm going to go one value to the left of my leftmost zero, and so I'm going to do negative two. I'm going to put negative two back into the function and solve. And so, okay, so you can use this negative two two different ways. You can put it back into the original function for the variables, or you can put it into the factors. So that's what I like to do. So negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. Plus 2 is 8. Negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. Negative 2 minus 2 is a negative 4. Negative 8 times a negative 4 is a positive 32. So I get the point negative 2, positive 32, and I'm up here. Now, was that what I was expecting? Yep. See, I was expecting this to come from positive infinity. Perfect. Okay, and again, I, you know, time's getting long here, but I would do the point um, 1.5. I'd stick it in my calculator and get the value. Again, for time's sake, I'm not going to finish there. And I would use the value 3. 3 we can do. 3 and 1 is 4. Negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9, and 2 is 7. 4 times 7 is 28, and so that's a 28, 3, 28. I did that quickly. I think that's right. So right about here. And then again, the only value I really needed was that one and a half. And I don't want it to here. Let me pause the video and I'll just calculate that and put it up. Okay, for 1.5, I end up with 3.125. All right, so 3.125, uh, somewhere right about in there. Okay, perfect. So here's my function coming out from positive infinity, hitting that zero, hitting that peak coming to this point, coming down and heading toward, toward negative infinity. Okay, there you go. Hey, a little bit involved, but doable.